And I jumped in and I said, oh, me too. I want to write my request. Mm. And she said, no way, you can't. You, you are just joining us today. Okay, thank you. And that time I had a boyfriend. Mm. Oh. And I went to see my boyfriend and I said, look, I have been telling you that me, I want to commit my life to Jesus. Mm. This is the time now. I want to join this sister. And he said, what are you talking about? I said, yeah. Uh, I, um, I'm happy to be here today with uh, Sister Rosalie. Sister, how do you pronounce your last name? Maybe you better say it. And Il Budo. Il Budo. And Sister um, came all the way from? From Australia. Australia. Yes. Mm. She came here for. Um, I came here for Susie, final vows, mm. because uh, Susie is part of our region, mm. and because she is uh, originally from Indonesia, mm. she came back for her final vows, mm. and that's why we, as a region, where Susie is part of, we had this delegation. And I'm part of the delegation. Mm. Yeah. Yes. And by nationality, Sister Rosalie is from? By nationality, I'm from Burkina Faso. That mm. is West Africa, mm. near Ghana, maybe. Mm. Yes. It is a very small country, French-speaking country. Mm. So she came all the way. <laughs> so basically, it came from Africa, come here to Australia, and then to Indonesia. But she lives in Australia now. So maybe we'll, um, today we are going to have a, just a chat with Sister Rosie to share about her vocation story, how she felt the call of God and ends up as an FMM. But before we do that, uh, we'll ask uh, Sister Rosie to just to introduce herself, uh, where she's from, and uh, a little bit about her case, okay, Sister. Hi everyone, I'm from Burkina Faso, that is West Africa, and I'm now missioning in Australia since four years ago. And yes, what led me to Indonesia? I'm very fortunate to be here, yes, because of Sister Juzi being part of our region, what called Jasmine region, and I'm part of this region too. And I was delegate to be here to participate and to celebrate with Sister Suzy celebrating her final vows. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, so we are very fortunate. Um, that's why we, I said we are very fortunate to have her because it's a rare opportunity, right, to, to be together um, like this unless we have occasions. Yeah, so, um, Sister, uh, we have uh, young viewers out there. And uh, part of um, why we have this EVIAT Media is we wanted to uh, share to the people, to our young uh, friends who are maybe considering of the religious life. So we've been uh, asking different sisters to share how they hear the, the call of God. So maybe we can start, um, I mean, it's how can a woman from Burkina Faso and ends up being an FMM, right? It's the story of God. So maybe we can share, like, how did you begin to hear the call of God? Like, and then, yeah. Thank you, Susie. Look, my country is not quite a Catholic country because we are only 40, 24, 24% of all Christians together and uh, 17 Seventeen percent of Catholics in my country, and it's a the evangelization in my country is just it was uh, nineteen ninety, just one hundred years something like mm -hmm. that, and that mean we still on our way. But when I was a child, my dad had a classmate who was a priest, and from there. He used to come to visit my family mm -hmm. and have dinner with my family. Mm -hmm. And I knew this priest from childhood. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to be a priest like him mm -hmm. because he was so nice mm -hmm. oh, with me. I wanted to be a priest. And he used to call me, oh, my parish priest. 
and ah. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, until I was nine, mm -hmm. I thought I'm going to be a priest and to become a parish priest. <laughs> Only because I love when these priests say, oh, go in peace to love and serve the Christ. I love this gesture. Mm. So, my mom used to say, look, you are a girl. You can't become a priest. <laughs> and I will cry and say, no, mom, I want to become a priest. And this priest will just say, yes, she will become a priest like me. <laughs> <laughs> it until I was mm. nine mm. that I realized, oh, Girls can't become a priest in Catholic Church. Oh. And I was a little bit disappointed. Mm. But fortunately, at that time, I went to join the children Catholic group. Mm. And I met there a religious who was so beautiful and nice. Mm -hmm. And so I said, no, I don't want to become a priest anymore. I want to <laughs> become a religious like her. <laughs> and started at that point. I used to go to visit this community and they are local sisters, local mm. nuns. Mm. And it until I was finishing high school mm. that one of uh, the Franciscan missionaries nuns mm -hmm. come to my school mm. and talk about mission. Ah. She gave a talk about mission and she shared her own mission. So she's an FMM. She's an FMM. Who came to your school. Yes. Ah, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when she said, ah, I'm a French, uh, native French uh, girl, mm -hmm. but I'm here in this country more than 20 years because I'm a FMM and I was sent here and I adopted this country. I even became a citizen and I love this country. And I said, oh. That is what I want to be. Mm. I want to be a missionary. So I ran after her. Mm. After she finished her talk, I said, Sister, sister, I want to join your order. And she said, oh, that's wonderful. Come to see me. And she gave me the address. The Sunday, the following Sunday, I went to her community. And it was the meeting for the girl, the, the mm. what do you call them? Like meeting of young women is yes it? are they invited like young yes. women to come they to invited the young ah. women and they used to have this meeting a uh, once a month okay. to talk about the fmm life to the young girl young girls mm -hmm. yes and uh, it was there maybe i think there were 17 candidates oh. and i joined this group mm -hmm. and that day sister was talking about Who's want to start their life journeying with us? They have to write their request. Mm -hmm. And I jumped in and I said, oh, me too. I want to write my request. Mm -hmm. And she said, no way, you can't. You, you are just joining us today. Mm -hmm. That is just impossible. You have to journey with us until mm -hmm. we know you and you will get to know us before. I said, no way, sister. I'm finishing high school and I want to join a religious <laughs> life. <laughs> and she said, okay, go, go and reflect on it. Mm. But you can't this year. Mm -hmm. I went home and the day after I came back to her, I said, sister, definitely I want to write my request. Mm. And she said, look, as you are insisting like that, go and write it. But I'm telling you, you better join your uni because nobody will admit you to start this year mm -hmm. <laughs> because we don't know you. I said, okay, thank you. And that time, I had a boyfriend. Mm. Oh. And I went to see my boyfriend and I said, look, I have been telling you that me, I want to commit my life to Jesus. Mm. This is the time now. I want to join this sister. And he said, what are you talking about? I said, yeah, I have been telling you. I'm going to join the sister this year. And he was... He must be very shocked. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> he was shocked that... You, you were high school, right? <laughs> yeah. So this is like high school love. Uh, high school love. <laughs> oh, he must but have broken But my heart boyfriend too. were in two, two years in uni. Ah, so oh, he's older. He, he was older. And he said, look, you might go to talk with my mom. I said, yes, I, w I can. And I went to talk to her, his mom. I said, look, mom, I'm going, I'm going to join the sister. What are you talking about? And 
what about my son? I said, no. I told him far, far away. I told him, but I, I'm not going to get married. And she said, look, I need to talk to you with my son. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a meeting, three of us, and I said, yes, that's true. I know you love me. I know he loved me, but I tell him that I'm not going to get married. So I'm going to join the sister. Mm. And I asked him, do you want to write my request for me? And he said, no, you go and write it. I said, please write it for me. <laughs> And he thinks, she thinks I'm joking. And the day after I came back, I said, please, can you write my request for me? <laughs> so you're asking your boyfriend to write a letter to enter the convent? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. He wrote the request for me. And I brought it to the sister. And sister, when she received it, she said, I kept telling you, you better go to apply for uni because nobody will admit you to start this year. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, sister, just put it, put it, and we'll <laughs> see. And to my great surprise, I was, we were six writing our request, and only two were admitted to, to start as a postulant. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the two. <laughs> wow. Oh. And even this sister said, I can't understand, I can't comprehend what happened, mm -hmm. and the provincial and her team admitted you without knowing you, I can't say. But mm -hmm. anyway, go and try. Okay, okay. I went, mm -hmm. and I've done two years postulancy, and two years novitiate. Mm -hmm. I made my first vows, and was sent out to the country to Ninja. Ni Niger. Niger. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was sent to Niger. Mm -hmm. I was. Uh, I missioned there two years. Came back to my country to study theology. Mm. So, so you wait, like, just to to get to get things straight. So it means you immediately entered. So what time? What? How old were you when you entered then? I was nineteen. Nineteen years old. Yes. Oh, and now, how how many years are you in a religious life? I'm in religious life now. It's going to be nearly 30. 30 years. Yes. <laughs> so from that day when you decided no change of heart. No change of heart. Wow. I went through a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. Actually, I decided to leave twice when I was postulant. Mm -hmm. And in the novitiate, again, I decided to leave. But the sisters never allowed me to leave. Mm -hmm. They always helped me, no, this will be over, just go ahead. Mm -hmm. And I'm still there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm still there. Mm -hmm. And yes, after my final vows, I was sent to Madagascar. Mm -hmm. Madagascar. Right? Yes. In Madagascar, I study my nursing mm -hmm. and later on, midwifery mm -hmm. and came back sent to Senegal. I worked in Senegal for six years mm -hmm. and was sent back to my country mm. and for a eight year mission, mm -hmm. obviously for four years. Mm -hmm. And I, I made everything clear with the general. I'm going back to my country just for four years, mm -hmm. no more. Mm -hmm. She said, yes, 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 go for four years. Mm -hmm. But I end up by doing eight years. Wow. After these eight years, mm -hmm. I asked to go for a sabbatical year. Mm -hmm. And again, my superior general said, look, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> she said, uh, look, go to Australia to learn English for nine months. Mm. And after it, you will go for your renewal. Mm. And yes, I arrived in Australia learn my English for nine months. After nine months, they asked me, again, the Superior General asked me to stay in Australia, to mission in Australia, and eat where I am. I still in Australia. And how long have you been in Australia now? Four years. Four years? Yes. Wow. So when you entered, did you ever think that you're going to be moving around? Not really. Mm. When I was joining the FMM, it was clear in my mind that I want to go to a mission. Mm. I never went to stay in my country, mm. but I've never 
thought that I will be moving around so many times. Yeah. I thought, oh, I will be sent in a country and I will stay there and I will adopt this country, mm -hmm. that all. Mm -hmm. But now I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it's FMM live. Mm. Yes. So that's part of our charism, right? It is. To be available. To be available and to say yes mm. all the time, mm. wherever the call is. Mm. Yeah. So, okay, so this, uh, so it must have been, uh, I mean, 30 years is a long time in religious life. You must have experienced a lot of things. Um, maybe you can share with us um, one very strong experience of, of God that brings a lot of joy or or maybe yeah anything anything that's more like very powerful to share with them I think I will I will spend all day sharing a lot of strong stories <laughs> a lot. that help me to keep going mm -hmm. but let me let me share only one mm -hmm. when I actually joined the FMM I was 19 years old mm -mm. and my boyfriend who wrote actually the request for me one year after mm -mm. he wasn't happy to let me go mm -mm. and so he came to our porcelain uh, community mm -mm. that was far seven years seven hours mm -mm. drive mm -mm. far and he came there and he met the porcelain uh, mistress. So he went to look for you at the yes. porcelain house. And he went over there and he came and he discussed with the porcelain mistress about me going back home. Oh, <laughs> he's very determined. <laughs> yes. And uh, my mistress, my porcelain mistress said, look, that is not me. Eat her, mm -hmm. and I'm better leave you to to discuss this uh, mm -hmm. issue, mm -hmm. and whatever she decides, I'm okay with. Mm -hmm. And uh, when she left us, I said, "Look, I told you from the beginning, mm -hmm. but I don't want to get married. Mm -hmm. No matter if I'm here or el elsewhere, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be living with you. Mm -hmm. So, if you push me to go out of this house," It's not mean because I'm not going to live with you. Mm -hmm. I know clearly I don't want to get married. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we are friends. And we will be friends forever. Mm -hmm. Go and look for another girl and leave me alone to continue what I want mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. And he left and went home. But he never gave up. He never gave up. He oh. used to go to my parents oh. asking them to push me to come back mm. but once once the military said look i want you to go home mm -mm. and to make this thing clear mm -mm. if you want to come back you are welcome if you want to stay home you are also free to stay home mm -hmm. and i travel mm -hmm. i went to meet him mm -hmm. to meet his parents his family and we clear this issue and that time, I wouldn't say it was easy. It wasn't easy at all. Mm. But it was so clear in my heart that someone bigger than this man is calling me. Mm. And I couldn't, I couldn't joke with it. It was so clear that I was so strong enough to stand in front of his, fa his family and... Uh, his mom, especially his mom, she mm. was so strong. Mm. And I was able to stand in front of her and say, look, mom, I love you. And I know you love me. But look, if you really love me, leave me alone to be happy. And that will make you happy. And that's it. And from that stage, we stayed friends for long. Mm. He passed away. He passed away two years ago. Oh, this yeah. man. But he get married, he had three children, and he passed away. Mm. We stay friend until death. Mm. And I still very close. very close to the family, to the children, to his wife. But it was it was there. It was there, but no, it's not what I'm calling you to. Mm. And I've never regret I've never regretted mm. making this decision. Mm. 
mm. never. Mm. That was a, a from the beginning of my religious life. It was a, an experience that I used to go back to. Every time I faced to a difficulties mm. that put me down, I used to go back there and say, yes, someone was there giving me hand, calling me to go ahead. It was not easy, but I made it. Why I can't make it now? Why this issue mm. is there putting me down? I have to. And that is it a unique experience in my life, mm. I would say. Mm. Yes. Like there's a certainty that you you just know there's somebody bigger, is there somebody bigger um, calling you to this, this life? Yes. Mm. And until today, so far, I've never regretted it. Mm. I've never. Mm. I've, yes, as I said, I went through a lot of difficulties. Mm. Mm. But all the time when I go back to this experience, it, it just like this person still there. Mm. And he is. He mm. is mm. saying, yes, go ahead. Mm. It's me. Go ahead. Mm. It's me. Mm. I can't understand, I can't hear anything, mm -mm. but the feeling is there, mm. yes. So is there, I mean, sometimes people uh, will ask, right, um, is it difficult to live religious life and, you know, is it more difficult than marriage life? Well, how would you uh, answer this, like, about, you know, struggles in religious life? Or, like, I wouldn't say it more difficult or less difficult. Mm -hmm. I think... Human life is just a challenging. Mm. Whether in religious life, single life, or marriage life, you will always have challenges too. Mm. Mm. But if it's your vocation, if it's a call, mm. you will always find the strength to overcome these issues. Mm. I think in my own experience after nearly 30 years of religious life, the, the, the only thing I can point out and say this is difficult is mm. community life. Mm. Community life is actually the most difficult in religious life. Like, and I think more in international religious life. Mm. Because, you know, it's, not, it's never easy, even if you are from the same family. It's not easy, mm. even. And... It's more difficult when you are from all the world mm. and you want to live together, to make a friendship. To Yes, of course, there are some uh, small issues mm. every day. Mm -hmm. but, but I think it will, it life itself, no matter which kind, religious yeah. life, marriage, single, yeah. it life itself. Yeah, I yeah. guess, I guess uh, difficulties is part of life. You can't avoid it, you see, right? Whatever path you you choose, there will always be difficulties. Yes. Because I think difficulties is also part of helping us to grow, uh, to be a better person, to be more mature. Yeah, so, I mean, right, I, I would say, sister, what do you think? Like, if you think about you, 19-year-old, and now, you know, as a sister, you know, there's a, you, what, what would be, you say the biggest difference now between from then and now? The growth, like you. Yeah, the growth. Mm -hmm. I think, oh, I just can't explain it. <laughs> <laughs> there are many, many difficulties that come to my way. And overcoming them just helped me to grow in my faith, in my conviction, in, mm -hmm. my, in my way of living my religious life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know... These eight years serving in my own country, mm -mm. I would say they were, they were actually the most difficult mm -hmm. years for myself mm -hmm. because I was there like the leader of the congregation mm -hmm. of the FMMs for three countries. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't stay long in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. And so everything was just new. Mm -hmm. I had to learn as I was working. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't easy. But these eight years matured me more than all the 22 years of my religious life. Mm -hmm. 
when I come out of it, when I look back now, I said, oh, God just wanted me to go through this way in order to match my human life and my religious life. Mm. And I definitely, I was very angry to do this job from the beginning. I was very angry. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I am the one who benefited more than anybody mm -hmm. in this service. So the difficult part of our life is actually the part which are most fruitful for our growth, right? Would say. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Wow. So thank you so much, Sir Rosalie, for um, sharing this precious experience of yours with us. I really hope those who listen uh, will learn and will be able to hear God speaking through you, uh, through this, and help them in their journey with God. Um, so as a close um, to end this our conversation and sharing, uh, do you have anything you would like to say to the young people out there, uh, whatever it is that you... If I have, I have something to say, just take your time. Life is not a marathon. Life is just take time, reflect, discern what you want to surrender your life for. If it's for a single life, go ahead. If it's for marriage, go ahead. If it's for a religious life, just listen watch and choose where order where which order you want to join and as soon as you join it put all your heart and your life in it keep listening to others listen to god pray reflect discern and be confident god never wrong never thank you guys Amen. So with that, thank you, Sir Rosalie. Have a pleasant uh, journey back to Australia. And we'll see you when we see you. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. Thank you for giving me this great opportunity to talk mm -hmm. to these young girls mm -hmm. and boys. Mm -hmm. And I hope my experience can strengthen you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.